Miss <clears throat> Livingston, along with Miss Gladys Berry, were kidnapping Judd Lincoln. Assistant Chief of Police Kareem Leon responded to a shots fired call and witnessed the kidnapping of Judd Lincoln. Um, is is she okay? <clears throat> Ma'am? Uh, okay. okay, all right, all right. <clears throat> a chase in suit of Miss Livingston and Miss Barry. They drove from Polito down Great Ocean Highway to the beach where a crash occurred. To continue to flee, Miss Livingston opened fire and struck Assistant Chief of Police Kareem Leone. Assistant Chief of Police returned fire and downed Miss Livingston. Miss Barry was able to get away. First responders showed up on scene, secured the area, and transported <clears throat> The assistant chief of police, Kareem Leone, to Pillbox Medical and where he was treated for gunshot wounds by Dr. Isaac. This time, Ms. Livingston is facing the charges of attempted first-degree murder on a peace officer, criminal use of a firearm, resisting arrest, and kidnapping. Are both sides prepared to give their opening? Yes, Your Honor. All right, at this time, Ms. O'Sullivan, you may proceed with your opening. Thank you. Your Honor, members of the galley, we are here today to hear the case of the people versus uh, Mary Livingston. Miss Livingston, who by all appearances is a, is a sweet old lady, stands accused before you today of kidnapping and attempted first degree murder on a peace officer, a brutal attack that began with what by all appearances was an act of revenge on a former attacker and culminated in the attempted murder of one of Los Santos's finest. The people today intend to prove that not only did Miss Livingston kidnap Mr. Judd Lincoln, whose life we can only suppose she intended to end as well, but when that foiled, when foiled and this attempt, instead decided to take her wrath on, on Assistant Chief Karim Leon, whose only intent was to see justice done and to protect a member, a citizen of our city. Thank you. Thank you, Miss O'Sullivan. Mr. Shaw? Absolutely. Your Honor, we're here today because Mary Livingston uh, has been held on trial because she's being accused of attempted first-degree murder on a peace officer. And in no way, shape, or form was there any amount of premeditation prior or during the shooting against Cream Leone on April 14th. In fact, she never intended to hurt a police officer at any point in time. And with that being said, we fully anticipate making it very clear that the wrong charge has been brought forth. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. You also need a jump, hey. Mr. Shaw. Oh. <clears throat> I apologize. Thank you very much. All right, I'll go over one thing quickly before we start hearing from witnesses. I ask that everybody please stay off their phones. No sensor buttons or anything like that. <laughs> Does everyone understand? I. All right, are the people prepared to call their first witness? We are, Your Honor. Uh, the people would like to call Assistant Chief Karim Leon, please. <clears throat> All right, Assistant Chief of Police Leon, please step forward. Bailiff, when he reaches the stand, will you please swear him in? Sir, Mr. Leon, if you please raise your left hand for me, sir. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth to so help you sin? <coughs> yes, I do. All righty, Your Honor, this witness has been sworn in. Thank you, Bailiff. Uh, Assistant Chief of Police Leon, uh, at this time you are now under oath, sir. You may proceed, yes, Miss yeah. O'Sullivan. Thank you very much. Assistant Chief, thank you so much for coming. How are you today? I'm doing fantastic. How are you doing? I am wonderful, thank you. All right, let's begin. So, uh, my first question is what prompted you to go to the Polito gas station? All right, ma'am. Well, I was in Polito dealing with the situation over at the sheriff's office uh, when I got reports of a shots fired over at the gas station uh, in Polito, the one near the uh, old uh, the old uh, car repair shop. Um, and that's what prompted me to go there. And when you arrived there, what did you find? Oh, when I arrived there, I saw <laughs> uh, a blue and colored sedan. Uh, it was like a four-door sedan with a like a with a tan like look like a leather top or something. Um, by the gas pumps, I also saw Judd Lincoln on the ground, uh, underneath a Gladys Berry. Um, I arrived on scene, got out the car, uh, and ordered Miss Gladys Berry to stop moving. Um, she refused, picked up <laughs> Judd, got into her car, and took off. Uh 
Was with, was Miss Livingston with them at the time? Uh, at the time, I did not see Miss Livingston uh, at that time at the gas station. All right. So what happened after Miss Barry left the gas station? After Miss Barry left the, gla the gas station, uh, a, a pursuit ensued uh, up on Great Ocean Highway, going towards Barlock Pass. Uh, they veered, or she veered left uh, and crashed onto the beach. Uh, kind of fell down a small, a small cliff, if you will. Um, after they crashed on the small cliff, the car flipped over upside down, and Miss Gladys Barry and Miss Livingston both exited the vehicle. All right. After that chase concluded, where did Miss Livingston go? So Miss Livingston, uh, after she exited the vehicle, uh, seemed like she uh, proceeded to run away. Um, we were right at the coast of the beach, like right on shore. Uh, she got out and she ran towards the beach. Um, my main focus is on uh, Miss Gladys, uh, as she was the one who was the prime suspect in the situation, being not only the driver of the vehicle, but also the <clears> one <throat> who I noticed witnessed, uh, uh, the one who was hovering over a Judd, who, by the way, when I got there, <coughs> Uh, when Judd was being carried by Gladys, he screamed, they shot me, they shot me, they shot me, help me. <sighs> but going back to what you're saying, uh, Miss Livingston appeared to be running away uh, from the from the scene. <clears throat> uh, the prosecution would like to point out uh, the evidence of Mr. Judd Lincoln's medical records in which he did, in fact, receive uh, gunshot wounds that were treated. All right, so... After that, uh, what what did Miss Livingston do? Right. So, like I said, as I was trying to apprehend and order Miss Gladys to surrender, um, I saw in the corner of my eye Miss Livingston. I said that she was she was running away, and she turned back. It almost seemed like, if my memory is correct, it almost seemed like she was <clears throat> trying to decide whether she was what she was going to do. She whether she was going to basically try and help Gladys or run away. Um, and I guess she chose the uh, chose uh, the former. <laughs> And she took out her gun and proceeded to uh, take shots at me. Mind you, I had my taser out at this time. And what happened after that? So as soon as the first few shots uh, initiated, uh, I hid behind a rock that was nearby to my left. Uh, when I, I said on the radio that their shots had been fired on police. Um, so I used that opportunity when I was hiding behind the rock to switch to my lethal, um, just in case I needed to obviously protect myself against a, a, a firearm. Um, mm -hmm. When I peeked over the rock, I saw Miss Livingston then running towards the rock I was hiding behind. Go around the rock, aim her gun at me, and that's when the firefight ensued. And uh, were you <clears> struck <throat> at this point? Uh, yes, multiple times. Uh, let point the blank. Record, let the record reflect uh, the medical records of Assistant Chief Leon, who also was treated for... a. Uh, uh, gunshot wounds. All right. Now, Mr. Leon, my, uh, well, frankly, my most important questions and the reason we're here today, whose decision was it to charge Miss Livingston with attempted murder in the first degree? Oh, uh, that would be mine. No. That and was why it. did you come to that decision? Oh, I came to that decision because Miss uh, Livingston had every opportunity to uh, flee from police. She had every opportunity to run. Uh, however, within the midst of the situation, even after the initial shots were fired at my person, I then hid from her in fear, in fear of my life and obviously to protect myself and the people around me. Um, at which point she then decided there's, at that moment no to run here, towards the rock I was hiding behind uh, to finish me off. Which is why I charged first degree. Thank you very much. Let the people also point out that... Uh... When an offender attempt, uh, uh, downs with intention or not during a dangerous crime or while committing a felony, uh, they may also be found guilty of murder in the first degree. Uh, I have no further questions. Uh, ADA, could you, could you repeat that one more time? I didn't catch what you said there. Sorry. When an offender kills or downs with intent or not during a dangerous crime or while committing a felony, the offender and accomplices may be found uh, guilty of murder in the first degree, regardless of intent. <clears throat> Within that statement, there seems to be a, a, a lack of premeditation, which our penal code requires. Are you questioning her at this time? I just, it seems like it's not the full sir? truth. 
All right, do you have any more questions for this witness, Ms. O'Sullivan? I do not, thank you. All right, Mr. Shaw. Hello, Mr. Leon, how are you today? Doing <clears> fantastic, <throat> Mr. Shaw, how are you doing today? I'm doing good, I'm doing good. So, uh, within the police report that was written, um, it states that you were screaming out commands to Gladys. Uh, could you uh, inform us of what those commands were? Uh, which part? There were multiple situations in which I was in uh, proximity of Gladys. Talking about the gas station or the beach or what? Uh, let's start at the gas station and, and then let's proceed to the beach. Okay. At the gas station, like I said, I arrived on scene. I got up the car with my firearm uh, and told Gladys to stop moving. Stop moving. Surrender now. She refused. Pretty much ignored me. Then she <coughs> proceeded to pick up Judd. I said, put Judd down. Put Judd down. Put Judd down. She refused again. Then I said, don't get in that car, don't get in that car, and she refused again. Um, at the beach, after the crash, pretty much the same thing, more or less. Uh, she crawled out the car. Uh, Judd was also also uh, fell out the car as well. Um, she was about to pick him up. I said, Gladys, I don't want to have to tase you. What's going on here? Stop moving. Put your hands where I can see him. Put your hands where I can see him. Stop moving. She refused <clears> multiple <throat> times, over and over. <coughs> like she couldn't hear me. Gotcha, and that was the extent of it, correct? Uh, more or less, yes, with Gladys. Okay. Uh, at any point in time, did you uh, GSR test Judd? GSR test Judd? Yes. Uh, not. I don't think so, no. Okay. And are you assuming that Judd was the, the victim of a crime and didn't shoot first? Yes. Okay. And uh, one, one question. Uh, you stated something along the lines of it almost seemed like she was thinking about it. Do you know it exactly? Correct. Like I said, the quarter mile. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Say, I'm sorry. Finish the, your question. I'm sorry. No, no. You, you Go ahead and finish what you were stating. I prefer if you finish your question. All right. Michelle. So, um, again, you stated it almost seemed like, it, I'm paraphrasing here, uh, almost seemed like she was thinking about it. Are you certain? That she was thinking about anything? Or are you positive that I'm she certain was thinking? That she, I am certain that she was thinking about whether she should run away or help Miss <laughs> Gladys. That is 100% is what she was thinking. And, Running back and forth in the background, in and, the corner of my eye, going towards the beach. And how can you be 100% sure of the mindset that Mary Livingston had at the time? Okay, I'm not, I'm not new to this, Mr. Shaw. Um, I'm also not a mind reader. So I guess to answer your question, no, I can't read minds, Shaw. But it was pretty blatantly obvious that she had to make a decision. No further questions. That's all we needed. Ms. She wasn't Sullivan? sure. <coughs> I have nothing further, unless you do. I do not. Nope, then we have nothing further. All right, Assistant Chief of Police, you may step down at this time. Thank you, Yana. Thank you. The rest of this case should go pretty quick between Archer, um... Ms. O'Sullivan, your next witness, please. Uh, Mr. Archer, please. So, Deputy Leon Archer. is the answer to this question on every one of them. Bailiff, you Archer. swear in. Uh, Go and raise your left here. hand for me, sir. You swear to tell the truth, <laughs> the whole truth, and nothing about the truth, truth to help you sin? Oh, we're on yes, sin? Sir. I didn't even hear it before, Jack. Right, your Honor, this witness has been sworn in. Thank you, Bailiff. Deputy Archer, remind you you're now under oath, sir. Yes, Your Honor. You may proceed, Miss O'Sullivan. Thank you. <clears throat> Deputy Archer, thank you for coming today. Yes, ma'am. <coughs> uh, I have uh, very brief questions for you. Uh, did you GSR test Miss Livingston? Yes, ma'am. And what were the results? Positive, madam. All right. And where were you when uh, you performed this test? Pillbox Medical Center. And was this directly after the incident? Yes, madam. All right. That's all I have. Thank you very much. <coughs> Mr. Mm -hmm. Shaw? Yep. Mr. Archer, how are you? Good, Mr. Shaw. How are you, sir? I'm doing good. Just just a couple questions, if you don't mind. Uh, did you sir. see Mary Livingston shoot uh, Mr. Leon? No, sir. Okay. And um, did you GSR test Judd? No, sir. I was unable to ascertain Judd at the time. Okay. And so, would you be able to prove that Judd was actually the victim of a crime and, and didn't initiate this? From my perspective, no, sir. Okay. No further questions. Ms. O'Sullivan? Uh, nothing further. Oh, this is going to be a quick right, court case, down chat. This time, Deputy Archer. Thank you. <coughs> yes, Your Honor. Your next witness, Ms. O'Sullivan. 
Uh, that would be Detective Raven, please. Bailiff, will you please swear in Detective Raven? Sir. Lieutenant Raven, raise your left hand for me, sir. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you sin? I do. All right, Your Honor, this witness has been sworn in. All right, thank you, Bailiff. Uh, Detective Raven, I'll remind you at this time you're not under oath, sir. Miss O'Sullivan, you may proceed with your line of questioning. <coughs> thank you very much. Hello, Detective. How are you? Doing just fine, Miss O'Sullivan. <coughs> How about yourself? Thank you. I'm wonderful, thank you. Um, again, real briefly, at what point did you arrive on the scene? I was the first responder after the original shots fired were called. And what did you observe? Uh, pardon. What did you observe upon arrival at the beach? I observed. I observed uh, <laughs> Assistant Chief Leon, uh, down injured behind a rock with multiple GSWs, as well as Mary Livingston, shot uh, slightly further up the hill. <clears throat> uh, was there? Uh, were you one of the those to locate Mr. Lincoln afterwards? I was unable. I transported Miss Livingston to the hospital, then had to go off duty. All right, that's all I have. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. Yep. Uh, again, just a couple questions. Um, did you see uh, Miss Livingston shoot Mr. Leon? No. By the time I arrived on scene, they'd both been uh, downed by their injuries. Okay. And did you GSR test Judd? No, after I dropped Miss Livingston off at the hospital, I went off duty. Okay. And did you assume that Judd was the victim of a crime and didn't initiate the, this entire process? Or entire incident, rather? I wasn't aware I wasn't aware of the full scope of the crime. All I knew was that shots were fired and there were two injured subjects that needed transporting to the hospital. That was my primary focus. Okay. And when someone is involved in a shootout, whether it be the victim or the person who started it, is it typical to GSR test both? Depending on when uh, subjects can be attained, yes, however, if a suspect or victim regarding on the situation of the shooting is attained much later after, it is impossible to GSR as there's a good chance the residue has then faded. Okay, no further questions. Miss O'Sullivan? No, nothing further here. On to the next. down, Detective Raven. Judd or Frank? Which one is it? It's going to be Frank. <coughs> <coughs> yeah, have any further witnesses to call, Miss O'Sullivan? Aye, uh, Mr. Williams, please. <clears throat> nope. Bailiff, will you uh, please swear in Mr. Williams? Lieutenant Williams. Guys, I'm not too confident in this sir. one. I'm going to be honest. You it's going to quick. Whole truth and nothing but the truth, so help you sin. Yes, I do. They can't call Mary. Your Honor, this witness has been sworn in. Thank you, Bailiff. Mr. Mm -hmm. Williams, I'll remind you at this time you're under oath, sir. <coughs> Miss O'Sullivan. There's no jury because jury trials are suspended. Good afternoon, Mr. Williams. How are you doing? I'm fine, thank you. <clears throat> All right, so again, briefly, uh, you were the one to find Mr. Lincoln, correct? I objection, yes. Your Honor, leading. Oh, jeez, fuck. I almost just hit Mary. All right, I'll rephrase. Sustained. Please let me rule before you go and rephrase, Mr. Right. Sullivan. Thank you. It is sustained. Uh, because jury trials Where aren't are fair at the, the moment. Where are you the one to find Mr. Lincoln? Yes, I was. And what condition was he in when you found him? Uh, when I found him, he was unconscious. Uh, he had a uh, very shallow pulse and was uh, had a lot of water in his lungs from being in the water for an excess period of time. Did he say anything to you while he was in your custody? Uh, at the moment, no. Uh, <laughs> not until there was a brief conversation about uh, Donna Mishra with uh, Assistant Chief Leon uh, about if he could remember anything. Uh, not while he was directly in my custody to begin with. All right. And uh, were you with him at the hospital? Yes, ma'am. Uh, was he also GSR tested there? Uh, no. All right. Uh, that's all I have. Mr. Shaw? Uh, no, sir. I had just gotten on duty and was responding to a medical call on, uh, just outside of Procopio Beach, at which point I found Mr. Lincoln in the water. Okay, and I, I do understand that you had, uh, stated that you did not GSR test Judd. Uh, no. I did not know the full scope of Sorry, what guys. happened. Sorry, uh, I just come on duty, responded to a medical call, 
uh, as Chief Leon was, I believe, dealing with Mr. My bad, guys. I apologize. Gotcha. And did you uh, search Judd for any weapons? No, I did not. My uh, main goal was to try and get him out of the water, uh, mm -hmm. and try and get some of the water out of his lungs, and transport him as quickly and safely as possible down to Pillbox Medical. Gotcha. Um, did you assume that Judd was the victim of a crime and did not uh, initiate uh, the situation? Objection, uh, compound. Did you was your objection again, oh, please? Sorry, I apologize. Uh, compound, two questions. Uh, sustained. Please, one question at a time, Mr. Shaw. Did you assume Judd was the victim? Uh, yes, I did. Did you assume Judd did not shoot first? Uh, I can't openly answer that because I did not know the full situation at the time. So I guess I would say I did not assume Mr. Lincoln shot. No further questions. Ms. O'Sullivan? Uh, nothing further, sir. Guys, here's right. Judd. Mr. Williams may step down. Thank you. This is where it's going to get real interesting. Who's behind that's not Murphy? Uh, Frank, you got to jump. Did you jump, Frank? Do you have any more witnesses, Miss O'Sullivan? I, the people would like to call Mr. Judd Lincoln, please. All right, Mr. Lincoln. It is a new lawyer. There's some glass there, Mr. Lincoln. Be careful. <laughs> Oh, hey, it's all visible. Look at that. <laughs> Fucking love Joe. Right, Mr. Lincoln, please swear in Mr. Right. Lincoln. <clears throat> yes, sir. All right, Mr. Lincoln, please raise your left hand for me, sir. <clears throat> all right. Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you sin? Yeah, I do. Your Honor, this witness has been sworn in. Thank you, bailiff. Mr. Lincoln, I'll remind you this time you're now under oath, sir. Mr. Sullivan, you may proceed with your line of questioning for this witness. Yeah? Hello, Mr. No, uh... <clears throat> Mr. Lincoln, I didn't know where my brain just went. I apologize. How are you feeling after your experience? You know, <coughs> I, I guess you're doing all right, you know. I'm going to feel so hey, bad for him. Another day for me. <laughs> all right, I will He's pulling at heartstrings. Um, Mr. Lincoln... Was there a reason for Miss Barry and Miss Livingston to kidnap you? Uh, absolutely, <laughs> yes. Uh, are you willing to tell us why? Miss Mary was under the impression that I did something to her in the past, which is fake news, <laughs> but she seemed to have a, a fine impression that I did. Alright. And, uh, <coughs> are you willing to tell us what happened at the car, I, I'm sorry, at the gas station? The last thing I remember at the gas station was I was talking to Nora on the phone, but I don't remember what I was talking about. Is that everything you remember? Uh-huh. Alright, that's it. No further questions, sir. <coughs> what happened at the gas station, alright. Mr. Shaw. Yep. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> Mr. Lincoln, how are you? I'm all right. How you doing out there, Shaw? I'm I'm doing okay. I'm doing okay. Uh, Mr. Lincoln, um, at any point in time during this incident, did you have a weapon? Uh, yeah, I have my gun. You had your gun. I, I always got my gun. It's my Second Amendment right. You need to carry one too. If you don't, you should. Did you shoot your gun at all during this uh, this incident? I don't remember. The only thing I remember was talking to Nora. And how long was it between the phone call with Nora and the incident that occurred? I hope he says he doesn't I remember. I don't know. I don't remember. I just remember talking to Nora. How would I remember the time between? No further questions. Miss O'Sullivan? Fucking love you. I had nothing further from myself. All right. Those are all the witnesses, chat. Mr. Lincoln, you may step down. Those are all the all witnesses. Right. He he played it smart. I don't remember. Ooh, I like it over here. I'm back. Ms. O'Sullivan, do you have any more witnesses to call? We have no further witnesses, sir. Do you have any more evidence to enter? 
I Shadow apologize. Lot. I do have a, a deposition from uh, a witness. I apologize. I do. All right. Would you please read that to the court? <clears throat> <coughs> All right. This is an official deposition from Angelo Esquetit. Uh He is the witness who called in the 911 call on the day that uh, uh, Miss Livingston uh, claims that she was injured by uh, Mr. Lincoln and uh, therefore the cause of the kidnapping that she performed later that week. <clears throat> uh, the, the deposition reads... I contacted Mary, Gladys, Tupac, and Hilda to perform <coughs> at the comedy club for an event I was hosting. All the guests arrived inside when I asked for my performers to come outside with me so we could discuss the order and who would be doing what. As we exited, as we exited a black four-door car was pulling up. I was excited when I saw the car because we had already a good at turnout and assumed it would be more guests for the show. Myself and the performers were standing in a circle outside <clears throat> of the comedy club, and the car pulled and parked a little ahead of us. To my surprise, Tyrese, uh, I believe that's Tyrese Tyrone, exited the vehicle with a shotgun in hand, along with Saeed Black, who had an automatic rifle. Judd also exited the car and kept his distance. Tyrese and Saeed then pointed <coughs> their guns at us and demanded Mary and Gladys come with them. They put both of them in the trunk as I pleaded them not to. All three individuals then got back into the car and drove <clears throat> off with Mary and Gladys still in the trunk. I get Tyrese's number from someone who was at the show and tried to call multiple times. He declined every time. I also <coughs> made 911 calls to inform police, but they still had a show to perform as we had about 15 people waiting there who had paid for the show. After the show was done, about 30 minutes or so later, I received a call from Gladys, who was shook up and informed me Mary was in the hospital. I picked her up, and she explained they were kidnapped because of a minor dispute between them and Tyrese. I was also told Judd was the one who stabbed Mary. Everyone who was at the event then went to the hospital to see how Mary was doing. And that's the entire deposition for uh, Mr. Esketit. I also have... Uh, uh, the incident reports from that day, uh, which is the People's F. I didn't know Judd if you want me to read tractors. it, but it True is the story. entire uh, incident report from that particular incident. Also no, establishing a... motive for kidnapping. All right, you don't have to read that in the court. It's already been submitted as evidence and been reviewed. And also the assistant chief had briefly mentioned it. Right. Do you have anything else for the court at this time from I, your side? From we, also have, <laughs> we also have we also have people's A. Please take notice of the weapon that was found on Miss Mary at the time that she was searched after uh, she was arrested. All right, thank you, thank you, Miss O'Sullivan. Uh, Mr. Shaw, are you prepared to call your first witness? Uh, defense is actually going to rest at this time. You're going to rest, okay. Mm -hmm. All right, are both sides prepared for their closing, or do you need a few moments? I could use just a moment, sir. All right, I'll put this court in recess for five minutes, and we'll come back with closing. All right. The court is in recess. My Go ahead and call this court uh, put back some on my session. pants if they put me back in. All right. I own a house. Again, Thank are the people much. prepared to give their closing? Uh, I, okay. We are, sir. Mr. Shaw, are you prepared to give your closing? Yes. All right, Miss O'Sullivan, you may proceed. Thank you. Your honors, people of the galley, as you have heard today, Miss Livingston had concrete motive to kidnap Mr. Judd Lincoln, a felony, by the way, kidnap which proven. regardless of intent at the time elevates the crime to first degree attempted murder, uh, along with the testimony from Assistant Chief Lyon, who clearly explained that Miss Livingston's repeated fleeing then returning to open fire constitutes premeditated attempted murder. Mr. Shaw tried to paint Mr. Lincoln as the aggressor and not the victim, instead trying to portray Miss Livingston and Miss Berry as the victims. However, a victim does not run from the police. 
a victim would be released for the pre police presence to arrive to help them. This Ms. part Livingston, doesn't matter. However, it's not in regards not to relief, the but wrath first degree charge. In the form of attempting to murder our assistant chief. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Miss Here we go, chat. Mr. Shaw, your closing, please. Absolutely. Your Honor, it's been made clear throughout this case that there are many things that occurred on April 14th. However, the one thing that didn't occur was any premeditation before or during the time in which Kareem Leon was shot. And the police do not know if Judd was the victim of a crime or the perpetrator. They assumed he was the victim on the basis that he was injured, but put forth no effort to determine if he had a weapon or even tested positive for GSR. In fact, the charge that the district attorney's office should have originally pursued was attempted second degree murder on a peace officer, where premeditation and deliberation are not elements of the, the crime alleged. And despite attempts to have the charge reduced, the district's attorney office or district attorney's office did not entertain those offers. And ask yourself this. What facts and evidence brought forth today prove premeditation and deliberation beyond a reasonable doubt? The answer to that, truly, is none. And given premeditation is one of the elements to prove that this charge, or prove this charge in the first degree, Mary Livingston is not guilty of attempted first degree murder on a peace officer. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Shaw. All right, at this time, I will put this court in recess, and I will go back, and I will come back with a verdict when I am ready. Please be civil and cordial to each other while I'm back there. Thank you. Uh-oh, chat. Chat, what do we do? Okay, I'm going to go ahead and call this court back into session at this time. Can everyone hear me? Yes. Said... Yes, Your Honor. Yes. Yes, Your Honor. Okay. Uh -oh, After chat. going through all the evidence, and I will give an expl explanation of my verdict, of course, as I always do. After hearing all the evidence, and then I reviewed the evidence in the bag mm -hmm. as well, as far as medical reports, and then the written deposition, and then the also <laughs> the uh, police report that was submitted and based off the testimony from the officers involved in the incident and Mr. Lincoln, I'm going to go ahead and find Miss. Livingston, guilty of kidnapping, guilty of uh, resisting arrest, uh -huh. guilty of criminal use of a firearm. He didn't say and, so. And for the charge of attempted first-degree murder on a peace officer, I'm also going to find Miss Livingston guilty on that. And I will tell you exactly how Fuck. I got to that. All right, we're going to write this when down. I'm going to determine premeditation. And I know also that the felony murder was brought up in this situation, which we have argued in this court before. Time alone doesn't determine whether a defendant premeditated and or deliberated. All premeditation and deliberation requires the time it takes to form the intent and ponder that crime. So based off the, te the testimony of Kareem Leone himself, the time it took Miss Livingston running away and then reaching into her waistband and turning around and firing at Trooper Leon. And then Trooper Leon took cover, as he stated when he was questioned. And then Miss Livingston also kept coming at Trooper Leon, fired more shots, more rounds were exchanged. He then downed Miss Livingston, and then Trooper Leon was downed um, as a, uh, after his injuries. He kind of succumbed to his injuries at that time. As I stated, though, time alone doesn't determine whether a defendant premeditated and deliberated. All premeditation and deliberation require is the time it takes for her to form that intent. It is the belief of this court from the time she was running away to the time that she turned and pulled her gun out that she formed <clears throat> the intent right there. So at this time, Ms. Livingston, I'm going to go ahead and sentence you to the maximum, which is... Three years in Bowingbrook, you also face a fine Fuck. of twenty thousand dollars. That's all right, guys. Bailiff, you may take her into custody at this time. This court case is adjourned.